All right, guys, I was nominated by the WHO to do the hand wash challenge for at least 20 seconds, so here we go. Wherever you are, wash your hands. Whoever you are, wash your hands. It's a simple thing to do. Let's do it for me and you. Whoever you are, wash your hands. Let's go. Wherever you are, wash your hands. Whoever you are, wash your hands. It's a simple thing to do. Let's do it for me and you. Whoever you are, wash your hands. That's all it takes, guys. Just 20, 25 seconds. Do it for your safety. Do it for your family's safety. And let's beat this pandemic. Uh, I had asked a lot of people to send in questions, and I would love to address a few of them. The first one is from my husband, who's here. Um, <laughs> I would love to introduce both of you to him. This way. This is Nick. That's Dr. Tedros and Hello. Dr. Maria. Hello. How are you? Hi, Nick. <laughs> Sorry, How are you? Your, your uh, live stream here. <laughs> yes. Um, doing well. We're we're staying inside. We we've, we've been kind of locked down for two and a half, three weeks almost now. Um, but I'll make my question uh, question quick. Um, I'm a type one diabetic. She's asthmatic, and and for both of us, I think we were concerned and, and had some fears early on about just being exposed and what the effects would be for us. So for other type one diabetics or diabetics type two as well, or people that have asthma or any other- Or immunocompromised. Um, what extra precautions should they take? And, and for me, what, what should I do to be just conscious of the effects that uh, COVID-19 might have? Yeah, you wanna start? Please. So what we know from um, cases that have been occurring across the globe is that there are certain people who are more at risk for developing severe disease. And those are individuals who have diabetes, they're individuals who have cardiovascular disease, have chronic respiratory disease, have cancer. Um, and so these are people, and, and people of advanced age, so people who are over the age of 60. So we need to ensure that um, you can limit your exposure, your potential exposure to this virus as much as you can. So taking the measures that you just said of staying home for, for a couple of weeks is, is a good one. Um, but we need other people who don't have those chronic conditions and who are younger to also help you because every single person who present, prevents themselves from getting infected prevents somebody else who could potentially be in a vulnerable category from getting infected. And I think if the one message we could get across to young people across the globe is that, as Dr. Tedros has said, you are not invincible. And we, mm. we have seen that there are people with underlying conditions who are more at risk for severe disease and for dying, but we also see young people too admitted to ICU. So it isn't just for the old people, it isn't just a disease that will kill people who have underlying conditions. Everybody is at risk. It's a new disease. So you taking extra precautions to prevent yourself from being exposed is good. And if you are out, make sure you do the same. You do the five, the five, which is this campaign that we just launched with FIFA. You wash your hands. Hands is the first one. Okay. Um, uh, 20 uh, seconds, wash your hands, take the time. Hands, the, elbow. the elbow. Sneeze or cough into the elbow. Don't touch your face. Everyone touches their face. Don't and touch then your face. the distance. The distance. Physical and distance. the feeling. Check how you're feeling. That's right. If you have problems, you know, temperature, fever, and so on, then stay home. Stay home. Stay home. And, and really, five. that's right. Those are the five things you need to do. Um, if you have any trouble breathing, if you haven't, if you know, if you, if you get sick very, very quickly, call your doctor immediately and, and go and go see healthcare. But always make that phone call first so that they can expect you coming in. Great. Got it. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Question. Thank, thank you. Thanks, thank baby. you. It's nice to see you. <laughs> I have a few more. Um, there's a question from Amelia Surti is, can you catch the virus from the air? Is it airborne? The, the virus is not airborne. Okay. So the, the virus is spread by what we call droplet, which is basically little um, particles of, of liquid that come out of your nose and your mouth when you talk or sneeze or cough, which is why you have to do this. Um, and you have to, those particles need to reach somebody's eyes, nose, and mouth. Um, and so that's, that's the only way you can contract it. So guys, that is something just that you guys need to know that please don't be afraid. There's a very specific way in which this virus can be transmitted and it's not through air, it's not through food, it's not through animals, right? 
it's not through food, it's not through animals. But the, the other thing I want to mention is that it could be through um, contact, the um, fomites we call, which is right. basically when those particles get on a surface, like a hard surface like this, if you touch it and, it's, and the virus is there, and then you touch your eyes or your nose or your mouth, you can get infected that way. So anything, if someone coughs into their hand and touches the table and you touch the table and touch your eye, you right. can get it. But that's a barrier. It doesn't mean because you touch the table, you're infected. You right. still have to touch your eyes. So if you wash your hands, you use the alcohol rub, you kill the virus. The virus is gone. That is a great question. Another question I have from 